if I touch it, it would explode and destroy all of New York City, parts of Connecticut and New Jersey. Oh. This is one of the greatest mysteries in all of physics. Is the renowned Large Hadron Collider at CERN putting our world at risk? Recent discoveries in an unprecedented crack in Earth's magnetic field have scientists questioning the potential dangers. Let's get into the video to know what is happening. Russia's war in Ukraine has sparked an energy crisis that is pinching consumers across the continent. It is also having an impact on experiments conducted in science labs, such as those conducted at CERN or the European Organization for Nuclear Research. The Large Hadron Collider, or LHC, the largest and most powerful particle accelerator in the world, is housed in this physics laboratory on the Swiss-French border. The Higgs boson, a subatomic particle thought to be crucial to the development of the universe after the Big Bang 13.7 billion years ago, was first proven to exist using this method 10 years ago. The discoveries made at CERN will also play an important role in the technological and medical advancements of the future. However, the type of work it does necessitates a great deal of energy. Every year, CERN consumes about as much energy as a city of 230,000 people would, or 1.3 terawatt hours. About half of it is used by the Large Hadron Collider alone. For a laboratory of our size and the societal benefits we offer, this is both a lot and not much, Malika Medahi, CERN's Deputy Director for Accelerators and Technology, said. To lessen the strain on the electrical grid, the LHC routinely shuts down during the winter months. Although the French government has been advocated for energy sobriety, CERN is taking it a step further by significantly reducing its energy consumption this year and next. The particle accelerator facility at CERN will close two weeks earlier than expected on November 28th. Upon returning from the upcoming winter vacation, CERN will further lower LHC usage by 20% in 2023. Meanwhile, Madahi noted, CERN is prepared to turn down its particle accelerators in a matter of hours if France or Europe experiences an especially severe shortage of electricity. She noted that many physicists at CERN are now conducting research that will be affected by the Institute's efforts to conserve energy. Due to the early shutdown, experiments scheduled for those two weeks will be delayed until the next academic year. Now for our large collider, it is true that there are two weeks of data that are lost, she said. However, given the amount of data already being collected and expected to be collected through 2025, the effect is less noticeable. Incorporating Energy Resource Limitations The energy crisis has been particularly challenging for other scientific complexes. Also feeling the pinch of increased electricity costs is the German electron synchrotron, also known as DESI, near Hamburg, home to the world's most powerful X-ray laser. The facility hedges against potential increases in electricity costs by purchasing it in advance, often up to three years in advance. At current prices, we are not able to afford it, Wim Lehmann's director of the accelerator section said. Energy efficiency is becoming increasingly important in the design of new research institutions. The Lumi supercomputer, which was launched in Finland this year, is powered entirely by hydroelectricity and was built to take advantage of the country's mild climate as a natural cooling system. There is always a North Pole and a South Pole on a magnet. However, the non-existence of magnetic monopoles is not contradicted by either classical electrodynamics or quantum mechanics. They are Maxwell's equation's hypothetical counterparts to electric charges. Since electric terms might be turned into magnetic ones and vice versa, their presence would make the equations more symmetrical. Like electrons, which were first hypothesized by Paul Dirac in 1931, magnetic monopoles would be point-like fundamental particles that carry a magnetic charge. String theory, grand unified theories, and other explanations for physics beyond the standard model indicate that these particles are composites with substructure, much like neutrons and protons. Evidence for such speculations would be provided by the detection of magnetic monopoles. And monopoles are expected to be stable, unlike the Higgs boson and other particles produced at collider facilities. This would allow experimentalists to monitor and potentially alter them for use in niche technologies. 
So yet, no magnetic monopoles have been discovered throughout the search. Researchers have employed particle accelerators like the now-defunct Tevatron and the Large Hadron Collider to look for magnetic monopoles, even though these machines were designed primarily to investigate particles with short lifetimes. Collisions between elementary particles can generate energies large enough to create monopoles with masses of several trillion electron volts. The hunt for monopoles at collider facilities is mostly concentrated on two possible mechanisms, photon fusion and the Drell-Yon mechanism in which the energy released from the annihilation of a quark-antiquark -quark pair is converted into a point-like monopole in its antiparticle. Scientists may then look for signals of neutron decay if a neutron or proton made contact with a monopole by measuring the current it would generate in a superconducting ring, analyzing its severely ionizing damage on a detector plate or some combination of these methods. When two lead nuclei collide, a tremendous magnetic field is produced. Although never witnessed, the disintegration of this magnetic field is thought to yield magnetic monopoles and their antiparticles. Theoretical monopole production rates and momentum distributions must be accurately estimated for researchers to make sense of collider results. If monopole signals aren't detected, it's unclear if this is due to low production rates or the non-existence of monopoles. However, it is anticipated that point-like and composite monopoles will strongly couple to photons, and this poses a challenge. This interaction has made it difficult for scientists to use perturbation theory to accurately calculate the production cross-sections of their hypothesized monopoles, which is a measure of the probability that the two particles would interact and produce them. Secondary challenges include the exponential suppression of composite monopoles created in elementary particle collisions by a factor of four, whereas the electromagnetic fine structure constant have a value of roughly 1,137, making their detection exceedingly challenging. This suppression renders monopoles essentially undetectable, and it has an entropy-based explanation. As the number of objects in a system increases, the possibility of forming a coherent composite particle diminishes drastically. The Cooperation Moedel, or Monopole and Exotics Detector at the LHC, adopted a new approach to LHC detection in 2018. The group actively sought monopoles as a byproduct of heavy ion collisions. The theoretical calculations of the monopole production rate are accurate, and the mechanism is not exponentially repressed. The group's findings are finally out in the open. Despite the lack of detection, the collaboration has ruled out the existence of magnetic monopoles with masses below 75 GeV, or 80 times that, of a proton. The most recent hunt for magnetic monopoles at the Large Hadron Collider has set mass limitations for these particles. It's not necessary to smash particles together in a collider facility to create magnetic monopoles. The conditions present at the Big Bang would have allowed for the creation of many. But where do they go if that's the case? Cosmic inflation appears to explain if they do exist. Their density would have been significantly diluted by the exponential expansion of space that occurred within the first 1 36th of a second following the Big Bang protecting both them and their antiparticles from instantaneous destruction. However, it is possible that at the very end of or shortly after cosmic inflation, so-called intermediate mass monopoles were created. Scientists are actively searching for monopoles among ordinary cosmic rays due to this likelihood. Numerous observatories have spent decades searching for signs of cosmic monopoles in the form of particle trails and electric current fluctuations. However, such investigations depend on the sheer luck of a passing monopole being picked up by the facility's detector. Finding the needle in the haystack is a metaphor for the difficulty of this task. Heavy ion approaches were pursued by the Mo Edel team rather than elementary particle collisions or astrophysical searches. When heavy ions collide, they produce extremely powerful magnetic fields that can give birth to the magnetic analog of the Schwinger mechanism, a vacuum decay effect that generates electron-positron couples when the electric field decays. 
The decaying magnetic fields may produce magnetic monopoles and associated antiparticles instead of electron-positron couples. In both circumstances, particle creation can be understood as a result of quantum tunneling across the Coulomb potential barrier. Importantly, unlike the elementary particle collision mechanism, this one isn't hampered by the exponential suppression of monopole generation. That's all for today's video, but we'll be right back with more soon. Please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, and thank you for watching.